Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. The State Division of Criminal Investigation will review an officer-involved shooting in Sioux Falls yesterday. Police Chief John Toom says officers tried to use a non-lethal method to subdue a man who was armed with two knives, but that didn't work. He says the man then approached officers in a threatening manner. Two officers filed their weapons, striking the man. He was taken to the hospital. Toom says the officers had arrived to help sheriff's deputies who had called for backup. South Dakota inmates can once again use tablets to communicate. According to the Department of Corrections, calls are being reinstated on tablets at all facilities. But inmates will be limited to only five 20-minute phone calls per day, and they will not be able to send messages. Inmates haven't been allowed to use their tablets to communicate for nearly a month. According to South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem, the DOC was investigating after some inmates used the tablets for, quote, nefarious reasons. You might notice some smoke on the east side of Sioux Falls today. Firefighters are doing a controlled burn at Arrowhead Park and the Mary Jo Wagner Arboretum. It got underway an hour ago and is expected to be done by 5 o'clock this evening. Pivoting to weather, we're going to see some rain. We're going to see some snow at higher elevations, and it could be a fair bit of it. There could be. We're looking at a foot to 18 inches of snow over the Black Hills. That doesn't include Rapid City. We'll take a look at that in a second. Right now, some thicker clouds are moving into Sioux Falls, 54 degrees, and that south wind is starting to pick up. As we head to Rapid City, thicker cloud cover, 57 degrees, and a very strong south wind for the day today. We do have a winter storm watch posted tomorrow evening through Sunday night over the Black Hills for that 12 to 18 inches of wet heavy snow. Again, does not include Rapid City, but we will have some very strong winds with this, so this will get upgraded as we head into the later parts of today, even into tomorrow morning. It's 54 right now in Yankton, 51 in Brookings, 58 in Mobridge, 56 in Phillip, and 46 degrees in Custer. Here is a look at those stronger winds right now at 15 to 30 miles an hour with some stronger wind gusts there in those areas in green, even yellow up by Mobridge. Those strong winds will continue through today. We do have a few wind headlines. A wind advisory in place through this evening for those counties in Brown in northwestern and north central Kelloland. A red flag warning there in red. A fire weather watch in eastern Kelloland there in pink and a high wind watch down in orange in Nebraska. All of this means if a fire does get started outside due to our dry conditions and strong winds, it can spread rapidly. Now we do have thicker cloud cover. We're not expecting anything to come out of these clouds today. That will start tomorrow. For today, though, partly to mostly cloudy skies, that strong wind, 62 Sioux Falls, 63 in Aberdeen, 65 in Pier, and 70 in Rapid City. We'll keep our temperatures mild overnight with some strong winds, 38 Sioux Falls, 37 Aberdeen, 41 in Pier, and 37 in Rapid City. Then for tomorrow, the strong winds continue. Our temperatures still going to remain warm with those highs in the 60s, but rain, thunder showers, and snow will all start during the day tomorrow. We'll have a closer look at the timing and what you can expect in your area in just a little bit. Thank you, Megan. If you're in the mood for something new to eat, Downtown Restaurant Week is underway in Sioux Falls. 18 restaurants are serving specialty dishes from appetizers to desserts and everything in between. It's an opportunity for local chefs to get creative. I think we've landed on something that's really good because it gives the restaurateurs an opportunity to do something that fits their capacity, their style. It's a way for us as chefs to really kind of showcase the best that we could come up with uh, for the community. And the community always turns out in droves. We'll tell you what Chef Lance is on Phillips is serving for Restaurant Week, which runs today through Saturday, April 13th, tonight on Kelloland News. There's a new team member at Metro Communications, but she has four legs and a tail. Nana joined the new dispatch center at the public safety campus earlier this year. The standard poodle lives at Metro 24-7 and provides support to dispatchers. We deal with a lot of really tough things, and just being able to, to snuggle a doggy every once in a while uh, really goes a long ways. Coming up in tonight's Eye on Kelland, hear from a longtime dispatcher who interacts with Nana 
on the job. Israel's military has released the findings of its preliminary investigation into the airstrikes which killed seven World Central Kitchen aid workers in Gaza Monday. The incident has sparked outrage in the United States and abroad, and in the wake of a tense phone call yesterday between U.S. President Joe Biden and Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Israel has announced that it will increase aid deliveries to Gaza where starvation is a real concern. Natalie Brand reports from Washington. Israel's preliminary investigation found that members of its armed forces thought they were hitting Hamas targets and that Monday's deadly attack was due to mistaken identification, errors in decision making and a violation of standard operating procedures. Israel's defense forces have fired two officers as a result of the investigation. All I can say at the moment is, uh, is to I uh, offer my apologies and uh, say that we share in the grief. The probe acknowledged the strikes hit all three vehicles in the convoy, killing seven World Central Kitchen aid workers. In a statement, the food charity demanded an independent commission investigate the incident. They were targeted systematically, car by car. Under growing pressure, Israel approved opening three humanitarian corridors overnight, including the Eras Gate in northern Gaza, which has been closed since the war began. These are positive developments, but the real test is results. And that's what we're looking to see in the coming days and in the coming weeks. The move follows a tense phone call Thursday between President Biden and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The White House says Biden made clear U.S. policy with respect to Gaza hinges on Israel's immediate action to better protect civilians. And he called for an immediate ceasefire. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. CBS News has confirmed CIA Director Bill Burns is expected to travel to Cairo to resume negotiations aimed at freeing the remaining hostages held by Hamas.